<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, May 8th. Wishbone and I are happy you joined us. I hope your day is off to a good start. And did any of you get out to hear the music last night at seven o'clock? Well, we did a really nice idea by our music department. We heard some percussionists and a clarinet player in our neighborhood. It was really nice. So thank you to our music students and to our music department for putting that on. And I know that there are plans and works, uh, plans in the works or some other nice celebrations in the near future, so stay tuned. A reminder that Monday through Friday, free lunches and breakfasts are available to every student in our community, and they can be picked up from 11 to 1 on entrance C20 at the high school. So drive through on Horseman Drive, it's right under the skywalk. So we need to continue to do our part. We need to practice good hygiene. Our six reminders, so wash your hands often. Cover your mouth or nose when you sneeze or cough. Avoid touching your face. Clean high touch surfaces often. Practice good social distancing, so stay at home as much as you can. Keep at least six feet between you and others if you must go out. And wear a mask in public, just like Bob. So I always say it, so have no doubt we are going to get through this. There are a lot of smart, energetic, and thoughtful people guiding us through this difficult time. And working together, we will get through this. So let's do some mindful moments now. And I think I'm going to ask Bob to help me a little bit. Bob, would you like to take your mask down just a little bit? Sure. It's good to be able to watch his mouth helps us know what to do. You can keep it on, Bob. So we're gonna do some box breathing. And re box breathing, and remember what that was all about? So it's in through the nose for four, hold for four, out through the mouth for four, and hold for four. So that's our box breathing. And this little graphic is available on my website. On, under resources. So if you'd like to have a copy of this, it's available for you. So Bob, are you ready? Wishbone, are you ready? In through the nose for four. Here we go. Three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four and out, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four and in, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four and out, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four and in, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four and out two, three, four. Well, thank you, Bob, for helping me with that breathing. And remember, every morning we try to do some breathing exercises and it helps calm our bodies and mind just a little bit. When we practice that breathing, we're very conscious of it. So thanks, Bob. Thanks, Wishbone. Well, this morning we have a special treat. A, um, we have a book today, and it's called Kate's Magic Garden. And it was written, written by Betsy Coffeen and Samantha Stagger smith and it was illustrated by Ginger Seehofer. So Samantha is actually a Mount Lebanon resident and a parent to several children in our schools. So if you would like, if you like this book, and you probably want to get it, a, a portion of the proceeds benefit a good, a good organization called Child Help. And you can find Kate's Magic Garden online and in local shops like Barefoot, Stitch, and Gifts, and Learning Express. So let's look at the cover of this book. 
And let's see if we can be good detectives and figure out what it might be about, if there's any good clues that we can get. So it looks like there's a caterpillar. Looks like there's a beautiful garden. Hmm, I wonder what this book is going to be about. Well, let's find out. So Kate's Magic Garden. Davy Dung Beetle, Walter Worm, and Pete Potato Bug trudged through their garden, and boy, were they mad. Our plants are shriveled. We have no food, and there isn't any shade for a home, they grumbled. We're hot, hungry, dried up, and fed up. What do we do? Maybe I can help, a small voice said. The grumpy group of friends looked up to find a caterpillar smiling at them. How can you help, asked Davy. You're just a tiny caterpillar. Oh, I know a little something about change, Kate said. Besides, I come from a garden that's filled with leaves as large as elephant ears and colorful petals as plump as pillows. But why listen to me? I'm just a tiny caterpillar. Kate turned to inch away. Wait, said Davy, moving closer. We'll do anything to make our garden grow. We've tried watering and weeding, but nothing is working. Living things need much more than that. They also need to know you love them. So you have to tell them, of course. Tell them, huffed Davy. Plants don't talk. They definitely don't listen, he added, poking at a dead stem. Maybe there's a better way to encourage them, said Kate. She wrapped herself around a wilted leaf and whispered softly. The sad little leaf shuddered and then, like magic, stood a bit prouder. Wow, Walter said, how on earth did you do that? Let me try, said Davy. Bloom, he shouted, but nothing help happened. Bloom right now, Davy demanded, but the rose bush only bent to the ground. It's hopeless, sighed Pete. Words won't change anything. Try again, Kate said. She was a very patient caterpillar. Words can change worlds. How, asked Pete. Well, Kate said, it depends on which words you choose and how you say them. Words can lift you up, but they can also drag you down. Davy took a deep breath. Please grow a little rose bush, he said in a small voice. I know you can do it if you try. I can't believe it, Pete exclaimed. It work, Walter laughed. See, Kate said, there's hope for this garden yet, but it will take every kind word you know to make it grow. Davy, Pete, and Walter went right to work. Davy chatted with the daisies. Pete talked with the petunias. Walter showered the garden with love and plenty of water. And then one day, Davy stared in wonder at the beautiful garden. Thank you, Kate, he called out. But Kate was nowhere in sight. Davy, Pete, and Walter had been so busy gardening that they hadn't noticed that Kate was gone. The friend searched high and low. Where is she, cried Pete. Kate brought our garden back to life. We have to thank her. Look, Walter whispered, she's in there. Whoa, said Pete. Wow, said Davy. They moved closer to the chrysalis. The three friends knew just what to do. You can do it, said Davy. We believe in you, said Pete. We'll be right here when you're ready, said Walter. And they were. Oh, what a nice book. Kate's Magic Garden. So, words matter. We use kind words, words that build you up. 
will get good results. So think today about using words that build people up in kind words. Thank you, Sam Smith. And she does have a tag. You can find her at Sam Smith of Words. All right, let's move on to our meditation this morning. And think of all the nice things we just read about kind words and being kind to people and using words that build people up. And remember, our morning meditation is always an invitation. But the more often we do it or practice it, the stronger our mind becomes. So sit, relax, pray, contemplate, take, just take a break, whatever you want to do to just take a pause. Because we know that great complexity outside requires great clarity inside. So let's start in our usual way. In a comfortable place to sit, put your feet flat on the floor, your back straight, and if you'd like to close your eyes or just look down, you can do that. Let's take a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. And in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just return to our regular breathing. And let's be present in this moment, in this space, at this time. Let's see what sounds we hear. Is it the furnace? Water in another room? Maybe your brother or sister talking in another room. What do you hear? And let's check in with our bodies for a minute. Let's get a general sense of how we feel today. And let's start at the top of the head and slowly scan down through our body, just noticing how our bodies feel, our neck, our shoulders, arms, bellies, chest, sit bones, our thighs, our knees, shins, ankles, and finally our feet firmly planted into the ground. Let's find our breath. So where do you feel the sensation of breathing? Is it in the chest or in the belly? Feel that expanding and contracting. Sometimes it helps to put your hand on your belly or your chest. And if you get distracted or your mind wanders, as it will, just gently bring it back to your breath, the expansion and contraction. And just like in a book, let's think of a few kind words. A few kind words that we can say to ourselves. A few kind words we can say to our friends and family. And a few kind words we can say to people we don't even know. And 
And let's take a deep breath through our nose and out through our mouth. Bring ourselves back into this space. The sounds we hear, maybe the smells. And if we put a little smile on our face and remember what our book said, words can change the world. And we can open your eyes when you're ready. Well, what a nice meditation and using our book that we read this morning. It's so calm that wishbone looks like he's falling asleep. Well, thank you, everybody. And we have a special note here. Bob and I have to do something very special for my son. My son's name is Nate. And Nate graduated from Mount Lebanon. So Bob, can you hold that up so that everybody can see it? It says, congratulations, Nate. Nate graduates from Penn State tomorrow. So Bob is very happy. Wishbone's very happy, and we're all very happy. So congratulations, Nate. Now let's end as we usually end this morning. We can either give ourselves a big hug, or put our hands on our heart, and you can repeat quietly to yourself, may I be happy, may I be healthy, and may I be peaceful. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks, Wishy.